to Linda Larkin and Jonathan Freeman! Oh, we've already got people crying, I do apologise. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much for coming. I feel like we should just let it play. It's just, it's just, it's just... Yes, first time. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Anybody, is there anybody in the audience from Liverpool? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go, there we go. So we could, we've come here all for you. Thank you for coming. Disney, obviously, is one of the biggest things in the planet. On the planet, indeed. And everyone, everyone knows that. And you are part of that. Uh, tell, us, tell us a bit about, about both of you. Uh, how you started out, but then how you got into to got the parts for the, for the Disney thing. Well, I I started as a dancer actually. So my introduction into show business was through ballet, and I was 18 years old, and I started doing acting work, and it was just sort of you know they needed a dancer for something, and then I I had to have a few lines, and then I just started doing more acting and less dancing and I started working in advertising so I was doing a lot of voiceover work and then I got an audition for this animated film and I really didn't even know that was a job I just didn't know that being the voice of a character was something that was even possible in my life and I just went to the audition I had an open heart and an open mind and thought we'll see what happens and that's how I came to do Aladdin people come in come in this is so, very, yeah we've already had the castle so good there you go so I on the other hand I always wanted to be in a Disney movie since I was a kid <laughs> and I was always attracted to the Disney villains, so, and I became an actor when I was quite young, and I moved to New York after school, and uh, pursued an acting career, and then all of a sudden, my agent, it turned out at the time, was very interested in animation, and got an audition for me for Aladdin, and that was about it. I mean, we, we really, we, I say we, me and Diana, we both <clears throat> were very interested in, in animation, and I, I wanted to play a Disney villain since I was a kid. Isn't that weird? <laughs> that was always, but it is weird, sort of. I mean, but it, it, they were always the most attractive characters to me. I liked everything about them. I liked their scale, and I liked... They always looked like they were having the most fun. <laughs> it looked like they had the best food, and they always had the best clothes. They had talking pets, you know. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to do, and it happened. It, you know, I auditioned for it just like we auditioned for everything. And um, <clears throat> and you both you both got to work with. And here we are. Yeah, and you got both got to work with some great people. You, I, I, I do I do do research. I try and watch things. I've always <laughs> obviously seen a lot of. But uh, both of you got to work with some great comedians. I, I saw that you worked mainly with Gilbert Gottfried, who was Iago the parrot, and you obviously got to work with Robin Williams a lot more. Yes. But what was it like working with those two? It was fun working <laughs> with them. <laughs> It was never a dull moment, for sure. And I, I didn't get to work with Gilbert Gottfried on the film, but Gilbert and I did a lot of episodes of the cartoon series together because we were both in New York and we both lived in New York. The rest of the cast was in Los Angeles. So we were recording together every Tuesday for, I think the show went on for two years. So I had a lot of time with Gilbert. My time with Robin was, was on the film, and it was one day on the movie. We did get to spend a lot of time together over 20 years when we promoted the re-releases or the sequels, so I had a lot of special time with each of them. But Gilbert was a, a true dear friend of ours. Yes, <clears throat> I, I did work primarily with Gilbert. I, I also had a, I think I had a day in the studio. I rem, I'm remembering two days with Robin. And it was not, um, it, it was exactly what you would think it would be. It was a lot of fun, as Linda said. It was pretty hilarious. And both Gilbert and Robin coming from uh, being stand-up comedian backgrounds. 
it felt like as, as long as there were more than three people in the studio, it was a designated audience to them. <laughs> so that they were on, you know. And when it was just me and Gilbert, it was a little bit less. But when there were more people in the room, he had a bigger audience. And, and it was always a lot of fun. <clears throat> and we, yeah, we miss them. It's getting lonely. It's, there's only three of us, three of the principals left. Douglas Seal passed away, too, who was, a, who was the voice of um, the Sultan. And uh, he was a terrific actor, too. I also uh, saw that you, uh, you were supposed to have the opposite roles as well, so Iago's personality was supposed to be you and, and vice versa. No, but... Oh. oh, is that what you... Oh, oh did they, You were supposed... You were going to play... Oh. You were going to play... It's, oh, I was... No, but... And, oh, no, when I, fr I started work, I think I was one of the first people, one of the first actors to go to work because uh, it was at a time when uh, Howard Ashman was... Who was one of who was the um, a lyricist of the of the film originally was uh, not well, and so they rushed me into the studio because they were trying a song called "Humiliate the Boy," which is not in the movie. But there were seven songs that they wrote for Jafar that didn't make it into the movie. They went on and on. I mean, finally, you know, they came up with a very, I think, a very brilliant solution. And um, at that time, they had not cast anyone as Iago because. Iago was supposed to be sort of like a proper, they thought maybe he'd just be like a proper little English butler or something, and then when he had to talk like Jasmine, they would just have Linda record it and just put his, put Linda's voice into the character. So they didn't have anybody. So there is one recording of me playing Iago and ah. Jafar, which is what they were thinking of at, at some point. But thankfully, they hired Gilbert because it made my work a lot easier too, a lot more fun too. He became the louder kind of character. Yeah, it gave me something to push against. I didn't have to be psychotic 100% of the time. I could let him be psychotic, and I could kind of smooth it out and be a little more ruthless. Fantastic. So we're going to open it up to everybody else. We will. Uh, and whatever he said. <laughs> yeah, to repeat. We repeated. So there's probably some really fun audio footage out there <laughs> that no one will ever hear. <laughs> and it's also done the, like I said, it was, it, there's obviously the TV series, there's the Broadway stuff, and you, you're uh, based in Broadway, and you're doing the villains as well, you're doing a lot of, so you, you only got one song in the in the, show, in the film, but you're doing a lot of the other Disney villains songs as well, I've seen. Uh, yes, well, uh, the, so they rewrote, I did the Broadway, well, when we did the film, there was no Disney on Broadway yet. There was no Disney theatrical. It hadn't been invented yet. So, um, yeah, I did it on Broadway for eight years, and um, plus all the out-of-town stuff that goes before it for another 500 years. And <laughs> it was uh, a lot of a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. I, I just uh, and they they wrote another song for that production. Um, it's called uh, Diamond in the Rough, I think. That's it, yeah. And then there was another song called Why Me that was written for the film that uh, Tim Rice wrote with Alan Menken, and that turned into a song that was used when we worked on it in Seattle at one point. It went through many different versions. Any more questions? There we go. Uh, all right, I'll go to the back for a second. Oh, uh, let's get me steps in. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jessica. I met Hi, you. Jessica. Hi. Um, I've got a question regarding for both of you, actually. Now, I know, Jonathan, that you were only in Return of Jafar, the very Marmai Disney sequel. But I'm wondering, did you ever actually meet Dan Castellaneta and Jason Alexander as well, or were you sort of isolated from the other voice actors that would go on into the series? That's a and, great question. And did you also keep in contact with any of your other voice actors throughout your lifetimes? Uh, I'll start with the cartoon series. So Dan Castellaneta, for anyone in the room who doesn't know, he played the genie in the cartoon series. He's also known for the voice of Homer Simpson in The Simpsons. So we got to work on the cartoon series with Dan Castellaneta. And Jonathan's character, after the first four episodes of the cartoon series, there was no Jafar. Right, so... Kill them again. Kill them again. Kill <laughs> me back. Um, so, I did get to work quite a lot with Dan, because 
half the time I was in New York and working solo with Gilbert. The other half the time I was living in Los Angeles and working with the whole cast on the cartoon series. And they do it differently. In the film, we would be recording solo or with the other actor that we were in the scene with. The cartoon series, we did it from page one to page 30, the whole cast in the room at the same time, and we would just sit with music stands in front of us and quietly turn the page if you know they were recording the whole thing. And if you weren't in that scene, you just sat back and stayed quiet. So I got to watch Dan work in person and he was incredible as everyone knows, but I got to see it right there in person. And I would say almost everyone in the cast of The Simpsons guest starred on the Aladdin cartoon series. So if you if you go through it and look at the cast, you'll see they all came in and did something. So, and Jason Alexander, I don't actually remember working with Jason Alexander, so that may have been when I was in New York. Um, I don't know, did you, that would have been on the cartoon series, did you? The first, I <clears throat> did the first four episodes, which turned into the return of Jafar. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that Disney did a straight to video release. But I. So it was meant to be the first four episodes of the cartoon yes. series. And they instead made it a sequel to Aladdin that was only available on VHS. Right. I don't know if everyone knows what that is. <laughs> <laughs> seen a VHS yet this weekend. Usually I'll see a VHS tape come to the table and I'm like, oh, you're an original fan. And anyone who has the VHS has been around as long as we have. Yeah. I don't I don't re I don't even remember working on that except in Los Angeles. You you did the cartoon series in Los Angeles. I think so. Yeah, you would have because I think the Gilbert and I really were working in New York for the last half of it. Right. Yeah. There was there was a great song that was written for that. That Jafar has a great song called "You're Only Second Rate." It's a nice song. Um, it's very funny. Well done. And I I can't. But I'm I know that I recorded that in L.A. I don't know. I haven't. These are good. These are tough questions. <laughs> there, was, there was a part two to that question, or did we answer it? It was oh. just about if you say. Oh, do we stay, stay in contact? contact? Well, we stay in contact very <coughs> close with each other and with Scott. So we are dear friends. We've never lost touch in 30 years. We were also very close with Gilbert. Jonathan and Gilbert and I all live in New York City. Uh, Gilbert lived in New York City. We live in New York City. Um, Scott lives in Los Angeles, but we get to see him frequently. I just, I was just with him. A month ago in Los Angeles, we were co-presenters at the Annie Awards, which is like the Oscars of animation. So we were there, we got to present Guillermo del Toro with an award for Pinocchio, and then he went on to win the Oscar like two weeks later, which was very exciting. So we, we get to do a lot of things together. D23. Yeah. You know, I don't we know. We enjoy each other, we've had a good time. Yes. <laughs> We've ridden camels together. Oh yes, camels. Done parade. Yeah, that's right. At a Disney parade, we were, we rode camels and elephants. <laughs> well, we make the most fun of every opportunity, and this is the first time we've done something internationally together. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So this is really special for us. Oh, well, thank you so much for taking the time to answer those questions. Thank you. Did your sister finally get your tiara? This gone. <laughs> if you had to choose which of the Disney film act with a voice in, which one would you choose? Hmm. Other than Aladdin? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's such a good question. Do you have an answer? Or well, I I still would have chosen a villain in whatever movie it was because I think they have the most fun. And I would definitely have chosen a princess. So I think for me, probably Belle. I think Belle would have been my other princess. I wouldn't want to play anybody but Jasmine, but I have a special.
special spot in my heart for Belle? I think I would have chosen Captain Hook and Peter Pan. <laughs> but they're all wonderful. Stromboli is great in the Pinocchio. It's a great character. They're all, they're so much fun to do, so. Thank you, thank you for your question. Who else have we got? We've got somebody down, we've got people down here, haven't we? Someone down. There's Snow White and his aisle. Um. It's up to make a flop. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't, you really don't, Linda is, is correct, you don't, you really just don't know. You know, we knew, we, we knew that we had wonderful people working on the project. We know that we had the writers, producers, directors were all wonderful. We, it had all the elements, but that doesn't mean that it can't fall apart or that it can't have that secret element, which is like alchemy. There's something that happens, you know, when a project comes together and it's really wonderful and that's what's great. That's really what, that's what people talk about Disney I, magic. That's probably what they really mean, actually. I think so too. I think there, there's something that you can't quite put your finger on, but it just, the, what is that saying? The, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, yeah. right? It's just, you, you can't imagine the impact it's gonna have when they put it all together. Years, years ago, Gilbert and I were on a train together going to a, a school for an event, and we both, it was the first time we really talked about it, talking about what you just asked about really and we admitted to each other we you know we had no idea that it, it could have been what it became there was no way to know it was a we, we it was a job you know we were actors and it was a good job we knew it was a very good job but you know it was just a job it was another job it was our next gig well thank you for making it so magical thank you oh thank, thank you, you. Hello, uh, my question is for Linda. Yes. Um, what's your favorite episode of the TV show? Oh my gosh, that is so hard. It's been so long, truly, since I've seen it. You know, it came out, what, 25 years ago, about? Um, I don't know, do you have a favorite? Are you a fan of the TV show? Will you tell me your favorite? Because I really can't think of one right now. Um, my favorite episode is uh, Sun Switch, where um, Jasmine and, I forgot her name, Sidera, I think it is, switch places. So I, so often I've heard people say, bring Jasmine and Sidera back. So I think that's a really popular one. Mm -hmm. I remember doing it. I just haven't seen it in so long, but I love that that you love that episode. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, Hi. Um, what was like your favorite song to perform? Well, not perform, but like, okay. you know. So, I hope I don't disappoint anybody, but I do the speaking voice of Jasmine, and in the original movie, Leia Salonga does A Whole New World. Shout out and acknowledgement to Leia. What a beautiful voice and talent. So she sings A Whole New World. I believe that it's seamless. I think that even to my ear, when I hear it, it sounds exactly like my speaking voice into that singing voice. So for, I would say, so that's my favorite song in the movie. And I can say it because I don't sing it, so it's not even conceited. It's my favorite song, she sings it. Um, for the whole two years that we're, we were doing the film, I would say the first year there was no Jasmine song, which is why I was cast originally, because Jasmine was you know, a secondary character. She was, it, the movie was Aladdin. It was about Aladdin. He had all the songs. And then the character was growing and growing, and they decided to add a song, and I thought, I guess that's the end of the road for me. I'm not probably going to be doing this character anymore. And they said, we're gonna find someone to match your voice. They had never done it in the history of Disney. And once she sang the song, I thought, well, they're gonna find out that Leia Salonga can talk. <laughs> so, I'm sure they've got a whole year to think about it. They're gonna change their minds and go back and have one person do the whole character. But I went to see the movie at El Capitan, um, at El Capitan Theater in yeah. Los Angeles, and 
it was my voice in the movie and I thought, well, it's done. I'm in it. So, so it worked out very well. But thank you for your question and it gave me an opportunity to share with you a very interesting thing about our film, which is that we were the first princess and the first title character to have different actor and singer creating one character. So if you have to play a different character in the film, who would you want to play? Mm. Oh my gosh. In our film? Yeah. Okay. I would, I would love to play Jafar. <laughs> I would love to play Jafar. That's my answer. I would love to play Jafar, and then you play Jasmine. I'd like to play Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so fun. It's just, he's right. The villains have so much fun. They get to do, you know. Anything they want. Anything they want. It's true. So I think that would be really a fun flip. We should, we should find one of those scenes sometimes and just redub it. <laughs> you should. Oh my gosh, you've given Next us a great we idea. Deliver, we'll, we'll get a, one of our scenes together and redub it. I will hold you to that. <laughs> so fun. Okay. <laughs> great TikTok. Right? That would be such a good TikTok. You could do a whole 